Um, so I am Susan, Susan Finn, and uh, the presentation today is called Rise Above the Noise, and already you've done that. You've, um, you've told us who you are, so now we know, and now we kind of know what your superpower is, and we're going to kind of think about what you said, what your superpower was. It's okay if you change your mind, but really kind of like hold on to that nugget while we're talking today. Uh, again, the housekeeping, as um, Lydia had done before, we're using hashtag WCRI. Um, my hashtag that I use for my presentations is hashtag rise above the noise and uh, Susan Finn 4 is my um, <coughs> my Twitter handle. I think before I even get to this part I should tell you just a little bit more about myself. Um, Thirteen years ago I started a small business and I didn't know anything about running business. I was in the technical field before that. And I met with some women and we talked about how to run a business. And then more people came and more people came. And we ended up forming a thing and it was called the Women's Business Network of Southeastern Massachusetts. The Women's Business Network of Southeastern Massachusetts meets once a month and to empower women to be what they can be in business. And what I learned in that process, it's 13, 14 years old now, but what I've learned in that process is we all grow stronger together. If you're starting a business, someone called me last week, I wrote a blog, I want everybody to see it, how do I get a blog up? And she said, I want everyone to read it. And so she, I think that's kind of what people do. They get trained, they get certified, and they go, okay, I did it. And so how is it that we're going to attract people? And so that's what we learned with the Women's Business Network is when you have 50 people all on your side, they're all your board of directors, they're all your critics if you need a critic, or they're your cheerleaders if you need a cheerleader, those are your people, those are your amplifiers, those are your zombie evangelists, your zombie loyalists. And so hold on to that as well. Um, okay, that's that one. So that's my vibe. My vibe and my tribe go together. I, I'm in a number of different collaboratives right now. I'm with the um, She Breathes Balance Collaborative in Walpole. Next month, I'll be heading over to the Norwood Space Center um, to work with the uh, entrepreneurs that are heading into there. If you haven't heard of the Norwood Space Center yet, I suggest next, check it out at some point. Um, and if you know anyone who's looking for some office space, retail space, collaborative workspace, check out the Norwood Space Center because it's awesome. Well, just this. So the first thing that opened at the Norwood Space Center is the Percival Brewing Company. So that, there's that. All right, so now I can do this one. So based on no like trust, right? So if you have a network, you have a collaborative, and every, maybe you've all heard this, right? Like people who are going to come to your website, people who are going to work with you need to know who you are. Maybe they need to know your superpower. Maybe they need to know you love cats. Whatever it is, they want to know you. They want to like you, and they want to trust you. And so anything that we're going to do in order to bring in traffic or to bring in your, your audience will be to that. And the way you'll do that is that you're going to share your superpower, share your thoughts, share your expertise. You're going to engage people in that. And then at some point you want to amplify. You either want to amplify your own um, content and your own superpower, your own zone of genius, or you're going to want to amplify the same of your people, of your tribe, of your people that are supposed to um, help you with that. And that's kind of the plan for today's whole session, is we're going to be talking about know, like, trust, engage, share, and amplify. So years ago, probably 10 years ago, seven years ago, I'm walking in the woods with my dog and listening to a podcast and um, just trying to learn everything I can about, about digital marketing. And I listened to this podcast by Marcus Sheridan. He's talking to Michael Stelzner on this Hor like the music at the beginning is horrible. You're like, what is this? But then he starts talking about his pool company. Has anyone here <coughs> heard of Marcus Sheridan? Oh, you'll check him out. Marcus Sheridan, listen to his podcast. He wrote a book called They Ask You Answer. But his whole premise is that if you can answer all of anybody's questions on your website, 
or on any of your platforms, wherever it is that people are going for information, they're going to know you, they're going to like you, they're going to trust you, they're going to engage with you. And so don't be afraid to answer those questions. Oh, I should tell you too, did I not say that up here? I will have my slides available to you, so pr take all your notes, but like these general ones to, for you to have um, a guideline. Those will be, you don't have to take pictures of the slides or anything, I'll, I'll send them to you. So, so Marcus Sheridan had a pool company. In nine, uh, 2008, economy's tanking, how's he gonna keep all of his employees employed, and how is he going to keep his business going? He writes one article, how much does a fiberglass pool cost? Well, nobody answered that question. Like, that's the, you're going to build a fiberglass pool, you want to know, I don't know, like, how much does it cost? You're going to Google it. Whoever answers that question is going to get your attention. Think about that for a second. Like, what, what are people asking about your, the work you do? You're building trust. And so the next, oh, I wish my thing was working. So where are you going to put those answers is, is, of course, why we're all here today. We're going to build, maybe going to build a WordPress site. Like, that'd be kind of cool. So once your site is up, and now you're going to put some attention to answering the questions. Maybe it's pages. Maybe it's posts. Maybe, maybe you are writing for somebody else. Maybe you, somebody else is writing for you. You put it all someplace. And then where else? So, OK, and then you hope somebody comes to your website. Or you hand them your card, take mine today, and they go to your website. But what, otherwise, how would they even know that you wrote this really great article about maximizing return on your vendor event? SusanFinnOnline.com. Um, so <laughs> you could. <laughs> You're going to send it out in an email. We'll talk more about that. You're going to put it out on your social platforms, and you're going to talk about it as we are here at any of your networking, collaborative events, or just at the coffee shop. So now you have your website, and you have your content, and you're putting it everywhere. And I'm not going to go over this too much, because Lydia already did. You need to have it mobile optimized. And you need it to be resourceful, and you want to collaborate with other people so you're not doing all of the work, and so that you can also help amplify your tribe's message. And measure it. Measure it, measure it, measure it. I'm not going into analytics too much today, but there are some really great speakers coming up about um, analytics. So do you have answers? What are your answers? What are your questions? You have, um, so you know, frequently asked questions is my favorite, favorite page on any website that I'm working with, with any client that I'm working with. You just sit with people, sit with the people that you work with, sit with yourself, sit with your cats, and say, what is the question people are asking me all of the time? What are those questions? Write them down. Five questions, 10 questions, 100 questions. Write them down. And they cues are what people must ask questions. What are the questions mm. people should be asking? Help them figure it out. I don't even know. That's why I always say people don't even know what they don't know. Help them know what they should know. Um, so must ask and should ask. I want to give you some examples now, because otherwise you're going to go blind from all my yellow. So this is um, one of my larger clients, b and Catering. Best cornbread and chowder around. So they were very resistant, and finally we got a great frequent. I just sat there for a day, and I'm like, all right, what'd she ask you? What'd she ask you? We just to listen to what they were talking about on the telephone. I said, what else? What else? What else? And I made each of the people in the front office keep a pad by their desk and write down, what are the questions people are asking you? And so we came up with this site, right? And you don't need to read it. You can just know. How much should I order? Feel free to ask, right? So they gave us short answers. And so I put them down there. And so after that, people could go to the Frequently Asked Questions page and get some answers. And then that gave me the opportunity to do more with those questions. So now, quick question, can you suggest any wedding venues? Yes, of course we can. I, and on the page that the other page that I showed you, it would go over to their links. Uh, we have a whole page of links, but that's a whole another collaborative thing, right? But in this case, 
I, was, I wanted a beautiful blog, I wanted images that I could share on my other platforms, and I wanted ways to, um, to talk about what we do. So yes, we've been to all of these places, look at all the beautiful places we've been to, and um, you can also go over to our, um, our links page and see some more of what venues we're doing. So there's a link here, highlighted in there, and then there's here, give us a call, and then four calls to action, right? So they can do any of that. They can read our reviews, they can go to um, look at other venues, they can go right to request a quote, that's the money, that's the money button, and, uh, or they can just contact us. The other thing I love about um, hashing out a frequently asked questions into a blog post is that you're getting all those yummy keywords. We're not, again, we're not talking too much, but you just, just know that I want to get found for weddings, clam bakes, barbecues, catering. And those are the words I'm going to use when I'm, I'm flushing things out. This is another way I use frequently asked questions, right? So I have just an image, and I can use that on Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter. I have, um, we already saw, saw that page, and then I can mix it up and make it look a little bit different as well, so that it's a little bit more eye-catching. Um, and also on Google Plus, it looks really pretty on Google Plus. So with that, I'm going to give you a few minutes <coughs> to take out a piece of paper and write down five, ten questions that people are asking you on a regular basis, just for yourself. You can share them if you'd like to afterwards, but I just want you to go home with some actionable content today. I say, let's say um, three minutes is probably enough. Also, while people are writing down, if you have any questions on what I've covered so far, I'm happy to answer. Don't forget the must ask, should ask questions. Another thing to think about is in your business, people are going to want to know how much does it cost. Right? How much does a fiberglass pool cost? How much does social media um, coaching cost? How much does it cost to have somebody post your social media for you? So if you have a page that's devoted just to, that's a services menu that has the cost specified, should you still include that in the FAQs? Or would that be a link, or? So it's a page, like you have it it's on a tab? Whole, yep, it's a, it's a I think you could do it either page. way. You know, so one of the things um, that you'll probably talk about in other um, sessions here too, but one of the things that I always want to do is keep people on my site. I want to keep them engaged. So maybe they're on one of your, maybe they're on a frequently asked questions site and they didn't notice the services tab, so maybe you could leave them there with a little with link, a link text. To okay. Yeah, or a button text. You're always looking when you're writing um, anything, don't leave them hanging. Give them someplace else to go right from there. All right, so keep working on those. Now, and I would suggest keep a pad of paper with you. Maybe that cool little Bless book, you. the cool little book that we got from the WordCamp people today. Keep that book with you. And when you're just with people, just like write down, oh, they just asked me that, they just asked me this. Like, write down your questions. 
Here's some more ideas for things to write in order for people to get to know you, like you, trust you. So cost, I mentioned, is going to be the number one. And I'm telling you, when you Google Marcus Sheridan, he's with the Sales Lion, he used to be with River, he's still with Riverpool, Riverpools. That is all he's going to talk about. If you write nothing else, write article, articles about how much, and you, maybe you don't want to say, all right, like I charge X amount of dollars per hour, boom. You might say, oh, you know, like with me, it's, it's custom. Like whatever I do is custom. So I'm going to write, I will write an article. I have written out how much does social media services cost? How much does digital marketing services cost? Well, it could be, you're going to say it depends. You could write a thousand words. Here are the things you need to know that might come into play. It depends. It depends. What is the problem with hiring somebody? Oh, Aileen. I just had a comment with the cost, because that's one of the toughest things. But um, to take a page from um, professional photographers who are really good So right, starting at, and then it depends. Starting at, and then there are upgrades. Like you just yeah. want to address so the question. Like a lot, you just have to kind of go starting at. Starting at. Especially if you have ongoing things, and you kind of have packages, and you kind of know what the least you can do something for, you know, when you have, when you have They want to have that idea. It at least lets them know, okay, this is, okay, yeah, I can do that. And I I'm agree. I'm not going to have to say that to customers when I'm talking with yep. them. And you're getting your ideal client. Yeah. Yes. yes. Exactly. Exactly. And to that as well, don't be afraid of sharing what problems there are. What are the problems that could arise um, in a photography session or in um, you know hiring? What are the problems in your industry? Write the article about that. Write the article about. Why should I use, um, you know, a professional a DJ? I'm going to try to think in a wedding. DJ instead of a band. Why should I do that? What are, What is the um, best right, marketing automate? Oh, that's the next one. Best of best marketing automation software. A comparison between software. A comparison between this. And the reason that these four, and then I'll get into reviews later, the reason that cost questions, problem questions, comparisons, and best of questions will drive people to your website with their searching is that you're getting people who are already in the funnel. They're looking for what's the best, what's the cost of a fiberglass pool? Why should I, what's the problems with fiberglass pools? What are the comparisons? Why should I use a concrete versus fiberglass? So those questions mean somebody's already looking versus writing an article, let's say, about uh, the best. I'm using Marcus Sheridan because I was listening to him all day yesterday and preparing for today. So he's coming to my mind quicker than my own stuff. Um, so in his case, it was you could write an article, five best games to play in the pool with your kids. So maybe they're just, you know, that's a pool article. You might get some traffic, but it's not that meaty. Uh, bottom of the funnel traffic that you're probably going to want to have. My other favorite page on any website is reviews and testimonials for so many reasons. But if you want to go out and buy a new dishwasher, will you just go right to the uh, um, appliance store and see what they have to say? You're probably going to go on some plate. You're going to call somebody. You're going to go on a social platform. What's the best? What's been your experience, right? Or maybe you just, maybe it's not your friends. Maybe you want to go and look on the site and see what other people have shared. The first thing I do when I buy anything, I just buy ping pong balls on Amazon. And I went down and said, which ping pong balls should I buy? So that is so important that you find those things. So here's what I want to show you here. Again, B&M, because I love them best. So, test, so what I do for them, they get 
Let me just tell you what an honor it is to, to represent this company. Five star reviews across the board. Everywhere they are. Yelp, WeddingWire, The Knot, Google, Facebook. People send in emails. So what I do for no like trust is that I actually take screenshots right off of their um, platforms. Also, if they get an email or a written letter, I'll put it in here. You may notice that I have um, links too, right? So here's something that was written because I, for a couple of reasons, sometimes I just use the text, link it right back to the knot. They can go to the knot. They can see all of the five star reviews. Whoever's looking for a wedding vendor. The other reason sometimes I take the text instead of the image because I can have all of these great keywords, right? Wedding, um, food, catering, right? I want to have all those. I want this page to come up if anybody's looking for catering. Let me see. So sometimes we put it with an image. I might have showed you that on the venues page, Facebook. So whatever you do. Now, not everybody has like this. It's just that I've been doing this for four years, and I feel like texts sometimes get boring. And also, I want to be able to share it on platforms, and I like images sometimes better than text. But just know that this is one of our most powerful pages um, because of the keywords and the images, and that it's building no like trust. Because really, when you're writing, you want to write or you're creating content or you're presenting yourself, there's really two factors that you want to consider. You want to build the no like trust of the people, right? So it's your audience, but it's also the search engine. So everything that I'm talking about will be to satisfy those two. Those two. So I've got, I have those um, testimonials up on the testimonials page. And now I go ahead and often I will also put it in a different format as a blog post. So if I used it as an image on one page, I will likely use the text on the other page. Again, so I still have the text and I'm not duplicating content. So we have it on, just use different ways. You can see that. And people are so nice. Every, every Monday morning, their inbox is filled with people raving about what it is um, that they just experienced if they went to one of their events. Again, you're going to have um, the opportunity to learn about analytics in, a different, uh, in different sessions here. What I just want to say is that what, if and when you get to the point that you're using your analytics, try to set up something that is, uh, lets you know if your efforts in these areas are paying off. So as I mentioned before, for B&M Catering, their uh, money button is the request a quote. Click on request a quote, fill out the form, get to the thank you for submitting, we'll be with you, in a, we'll be with you shortly page. That's my money page and I measure every time anybody gets to that page, where did they come from? How did they get there? What page did they come in from to get to request a quote? I'm going to take a breath for a second because this is my favorite part. And I love that all of that because you need all of that in the website before you do all of this. But if you do nothing else, even if you don't do a website and you want to reach people, the people you want to reach probably, and I feel like we're all kind of small business owners here. I mostly work with small business owners. You want to meet with the people that, you want to reach the people that have already known something about you. They know you a little. Hopefully they like you. You want them to trust you. And even if you have a list of 30 people, stay in touch with them regularly. I know people are like, oh, I don't want to bother people in their email, in their, new, in their box. I'm like, I know. But how else are you going to reach them unless you call them? I'm like, I don't, they don't call anymore. So, um, so I think of it like a, uh, like a plate of spaghetti. So if you're boiling spaghetti and you're putting your content out on the website and you're putting it on your social media and you're putting it um, everywhere and you're handing out flyers and you're going to uh, events, it's like boiling a pot of spaghetti and throwing the spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks, right? You don't really know where it's going to stick or what it's going to do. But if you take that spaghetti and you put it on a plate and you give it a little bit of sauce and you send it, but it's like, okay, this one gets the vegan sauce and this one gets the um, cream sauce. You're, you're making the content for the people that already know you 
and like you and have somehow met you and you're serving it up here. I know that you're interested because we've had this discussion. Let me tell you about um, your next vendor event. Let me tell you how to make the most out of your next vendor event. Make it mobile optimized. Make it month. I, I, I like monthly. People are like, oh, it's too much. I think that monthly is fine. Um, weekly sometimes is too much. Daily, I don't know. I get book bug daily. I'm thrilled because they give you those great Kindle books for cheap. Um, figure it out what works. Some people that might be too much and maybe they do seasonal. Make it munchable. I have a client and she's very, she, she's amazing. But she, and she wants to give, 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 give. So her newsletters are really long. And, and she's thinking like of the old time PDF ones or that you would get in the mail or whatever. And it's so good. But she'll only do it once a season. And what I'd love to see her do is cut it down, make it less frequent so that people will really eat it. I'm like, how much time are you spending looking at all that amazing content? And it is amazing content she's making. And then measure it. See, see what it, everything I'm going to tell you, just measure it. So here's b and Catering's um, email newsletter. You can see that it's well branded. It's very clear what it is. Um, here we've used the testimonial again. And then what I love about this, right, the buttons. I love buttons on, on email marketing. Here's again, frequently asked qu questions. They can go and read all those, right? Those are my two favorite pages. I want them to go there as much as they can because that's where all the good stuff is. And of course, I'm going to share it, one of their menus. Um, let's see. Oh, I have clicked to view up there. Let's see what we're doing. Oh, I think it just, it just again, shows you what it looks like in somebody's, right? Quick, easy, what, you know what I want you to do. I want you to learn about the menu. I want you to read more, frequently ask questions, view more testimonies. And then they always have contests. By the way, they have contests. They give away clam bake every month. I love that you have that finger in there to remind you what you want to do with that slide. How did you get that there? It's just an image. <laughs> it's a linked image. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> wow, yeah, so measure, 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 right? And you'll learn about that. But all I want you to see here is that almost 50% of the people who opened this email opened it on their mobile. So to the fact of this other client that I had a long time ago who just would do PDF, she would, it was just as an attachment through her Outlook. No way to measure it, who was looking at it, who was bouncing. What I also love about third-party email, this is constant. I use constant contact and MailChimp. Um, I love that people can opt out. It's permission based. If, you, if my content is not of value to you, I will not be offended if you, I understand, I want to clean inbox as well. So we, you want to build your list, right? I love, first, again, permission based. Build your list. And when you're building your list, if you're just starting to build your list, you're in a really great position. Because think about this for a second. Do you want to give group A the same content that you're giving group B? And I'm, I'm, I should have come up with an example mm, for me. Do I want to give everybody information on um, vendor events or, or not? Well, probably not. I know who my my contacts are in my list who have that in their business model. I don't necessarily need that to send that to everybody on my list. So I have a segmented list for people who I know do participate in vendor events and would make use of information on building their list and how to um, get people's names and how to stay in touch with people <coughs> through a vendor event. Oh, plenty of these little arrows here. So today, this weekend, you're going to, maybe everybody here, just kind of, here's my cards. Hand out your cards. You meet people here. Is it OK if I add you to my email list? OK, thanks. Um, if you're in a networking group, such as the Women's Business Network, or the She Breeds Collaborative, or something, the Norwood Space Center, one of the things they may offer you is to, uh, access, God bless you, is to access their list. And so that is gold, right? So if you can just get an Excel spreadsheet from some, uh, let's say, the Women's Business Network, and you upload that, 
to your permission-based email marketing system, and then you send out an email, hey, just join the Women's Business Network, I see that you're on the list, here's what you can expect, I send out my um, newsletters once a month, and um, here's what I include, and I'd love to keep you on my list, but if for some reason this is of no value to you, here's how you opt out. If you're on a if you're on a group, no, you can do an um, opt-in. You can do an opt-in, but you can't do an opt-out. You have to ask those people if they want to be here. You can't say if you don't want this opt-out. They require that you've gotten permission before you ask them, well, like, or that you ask them to opt-in. Exactly. Well, you only because if you're in a one email. but I'm, so I wouldn't do that here. Well, I will. If you opt-in, you'll be opting. It'll be an <laughs> option too. But in the Women's Business Network, I think that. Um, what is it? It's expected that as a networking group, this is going to happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe in that case. But yeah. Normally, you can't I wouldn't take a list from somewhere else, yeah. right? Yeah. Unless it's like a networking collaborative kind of place. I wouldn't take, you know, somebody's. I don't know. You would really, yeah, you want to be careful, you, and you never want to go against that permission base. I believe when you do, if you got a list from somewhere that, you know, if you're, like your women's group is a little different than everybody expects to. Yeah. If you add someone to a list without their permission, I believe it's a $2,500 fine per email that you, if you add to a list that, right. you know, people Plus it's just creepy. That's not no light yeah. trust, yeah. right? That's creepy. And you do also have to have an opt out at the unsubscribe at your email. Absolutely. At the yeah. That's fine as well, I believe. Yeah. Happily, constant contact includes that. We yeah, yeah. MailChimp, but most of them do. Yeah. So as a business owner, when we get we collect emails um, when people are checking out. Yep. Um, and typically we give them the option, like um, you know, let's say do you want to be contacted only regarding your the, your order, or do you want to be added to our list? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we tell them what our frequency of delivery is. But occasionally we forget that line, and we just give us their email. Is it expected to get emails from? If I'm not sure what the rules are, then. About, so I don't opt them into my list. Like that's something that in my customer base we have to say yes to the list. But then I'm like, I don't know whether or not it's okay to say, well, they gave me their email, they're standing in front of me and telling it to me. Does that mean that they're giving me permission kind of intrinsically or not? If I don't specify. I, you know, I would check with you. I would check somebody who probably has better pulse on that than I. It, if I were at your store and you asked me for my email, on, on I would expect that I'm going to get an email from you that says, welcome, glad you stopped in, here's a discount, here's a coupon. If you don't want to get any more mail from us, click here to opt out. If I'm giving you my email address, I expect to hear from you. Yeah? <coughs> oh, why did I come here? The captured garden, amazing. Because um, you can put an opt-in uh, in your in this case, it's a, it's a Facebook page, right? So Facebook business page, you can put a plug-in in this case, it says receive garden tips, and that is going to go directly to her list, and they, people who opt in on that list then get an email, thanks so much for signing up, here's what you can expect, if this is not what you expected, please opt out. So another example of that is uh, maximizing your return on your vendor books, events. So I really liked this article. I worked hard on it. I put together a lot of um, good tips for people who are doing vendor events. I, I, I've gone to so many events and people show up with their items and they've worked so hard putting their things together. They're not collecting email addresses. They're not um, promoting their website, their Facebook page is not branded, and I just feel like, wow, they worked so hard. I really want them to squeeze juice out of it, so I really love this article. And then I loved it so much that I ended up making a um, an ebook that they can download. And so this is a lead generator, if you've heard that word for the lead generator. And so now they can take this and it's in a, a nice ebook. So what they have to do is click on that, that brings them to my opt-in, make the most of your vendor event. I'll be happy to send you my free ebook. They're sending me just their email address and their first name. 
and um, and they'll get the same thing. Welcome, here's your book. If you do not want to hear from me anymore, click opt out. And this is what the book looks like. So I think it's a value. I'm offering something of value at that point. And so that button now will go on any article that I write about um, maximizing your vendor event or building your business. Oh, so here's my lead generator for you guys. If you would like to have um, my deck as a PDF for today, you can take out your phone and you can text the word Buttonwood, which is the name of my phone. <coughs> you can text the word Buttonwood, make sure it doesn't spell correct something else, to 42828. Somebody, when someone does it, let me know what happens. Hopefully it's going to do the right thing. I made my husband try it yesterday. Hello, how much fun is this? Please reply with your email address. I will send you a link to access today's slide. How much fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> Love the 21st century. I'm just saying. Let's see where I am on my schedule. Hey, everybody got that? <laughs> so I can. We briefly talked about segments. So another thing about segments, and somebody else can talk about this a little bit more, but here's the thing. So I wrote a few articles for this particular b and Catering um, newsletter. Um, this one happened to be about drop off the phase and family dinners. And 37 people opened that link, which is a fairly good number for them, right? It's a caterer. How many things do you really want to read from a caterer? But 37 opened it, and I thought, well, that's a pretty good number. So we took those people. I was able to download that list as an Excel spreadsheet and, or um, segment them into a separate list. So now every once in a while, I send to those 37 people something else about, did you know that B&M Catering brings food right to your house? They're bringing food to my house tomorrow. And so another one that I loved, let me think about which one this was. Oh, it was an article about, um, having a, a, your corporate picnic, ideas for your corporate picnic, what kind of foods we can bring to your corporate picnic, games you can play on your corporate picnic. It was, a, it was, it was a, a little bit of a fluff one, but what I did notice was that it had a high open rate, and I downloaded um, the people who opened it, and from the email addresses, you could tell there were a lot of people who were, who were on our list through corporations, right? Like at Prime America, at this, at that. And so what I did was I gave that list to Brian, B of B and M Catering, I gave that to Brian Doherty, and he was able to then look and see if he recognized or didn't recognize. And don't you know this is how he is? He he brought like a plate, he just showed up. He just filled his van with like plates of cookies or sandwiches or whatever and just showed up unsolicited, they never knew that it was because they, he had opened up something about corporate picnics that I gave him this list, but he was able to go in, build, know, like, trust, engage with people, and be able to get more of the corporate picnics. Robin? So, just getting back to the, the third text up, I do use Google Analytics for other things. This happens to be on their um, constant contact email marketing. All right, so that's from, that particular thing is from constant contact. Yes. So that shows which social media site that, that thing was clicked on, uh, This shows which link on their newsletter okay. got opened up. So I had like, you know, a picture, a nice picture, and something about corporate picnics for more read here, you know, click here to read more and it took them to that. Now what I were working on is then if somebody gets to that site, I'm trying to, then I would follow it on, then I would go over to Google Analytics and I would say, gee, how many people that landed on, let's say this one, family dinner buffets, actually completed all the way to request a quote, the money button. 
So I'm going to give you just like a minute, maybe two minutes, just kind of think in your head, just again so you have actionable things to work on when you leave here today. Think or write down what kind of email segments or audience segments you might have, right? So I have some that are um, Massachusetts, I have my different networking groups, I have women, and I have vendors. Maybe you have other segments that you would Okay, so you can finish that up too. So why, keep thinking about that. So now on to the second part of where do things go. You have your website. Email marketing is its own entity and so powerful. Oh, I wish I could hold numbers in my head. Return on investment of email marketing. It's a big number. It's a big number. <laughs> so uh, social media, similar. Be a resource, be a connector, and be strategic. Don't just throw the spaghetti against the wall. Figure out how you're going to present the spaghetti on the plate and to, who, to whom you will be presenting it. You want to connect with the right people. You want to schedule so that you don't have to think of something every single day, similar to what Lydia was talking about with scheduling your blog posts. Use the scheduling tools that are available on the platforms, or you can use you know, something like Hootsuite, Buffer, Sprout Social to um, schedule your posts and be strategic about it. Content calendars, Aileen can tell you all about content calendars. Content calendars make life so easy. Set it, don't forget it, because you still want to engage, but set it up so that you can think, and it makes, time, it makes your work so much easier. Of course, measure, 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 measure. So on social media, and this is for B&M Catering, this might be hard for you to see, so I'm using the yellow arrows here. So this was a post last September, actually, around this time. And they had just such a busy weekend. Last weekend, actually, was one of their busier weekends. You'd think it would be all summer long, but September uh, 13th was one of their, they had like 20 events they were catering. And they were at all different locations. So in this case, Autumn in the Air, and we're heading to Arrowhead Acres in Uxbridge. We're going to Terry Diddle Farm in Rehoboth. We're going to Overlook at Gear Tree Farm in, in um, Griswold, Connecticut. And I'm tagging each of those um, organizations because I know that they are our collaborators. We, we know that we're featured on their site. We have them featured on our site. And we know that there's a lot of back and forth. They are our tribe. And I want them to know that we're shouting out to them, and I want them to shout out to us, if possible. People are different with their social media and their business. But here's something, and don't, again, you'll learn more later, and this is just so you can see. If I'm engaging with Terry Diddle because they're on our site, or uh, Overlook, or Arrowhead Acres, I want, I'm doing it because I have looked at our Google Analytics, and I have noticed that we're getting traffic off of their websites. And I want them to know that um, we're noticing them and we can do the back and forth. So if I look at referrals on my Google Analytics, what brought traffic to our website over a month, let's say? It, so Facebook sent 78. 25% of uh, the referrals, that's not all of the traffic, just the referrals that came in from other sites was from Facebook. But then, oh, and then another, so that was mobile Facebook, and then number three is also Facebook, so that many. And then Terry Diddle Farm, we had 31 people come to our site 
off of the Terry Diddle Farm site. We had 16 people come from the Arrowhead Acre site. The Knot is driving some traffic. Yelp is wonderful for us. Um, and then so Fort Adams is another. So the yellow ones are all referral websites, and then the blue ones are more social links. I pay attention to that because that's where I'm going to be strategic and spend more of my time and energy. This is a personal one that I wanted to get some, um, I wanted to help she breeds get a little bit of traction for something that they are, were, were trying to get more business owners in to do this Zen retreat. If, if, if you know anybody who needs like a space for a uh, half day or a full day retreat, this place is amazing. It's in Walpole, Massachusetts, and it's beautiful. And so I, it's myself, because I can be, I, in that area, I can be an influencer. So I didn't do it from my business page. I did it from my personal page. I tagged Jennifer Belbrand, who is the owner, so that she would notice. And I uh, tagged She Breathes Balance and Wellness so that it, people knew where to go for more information. And then I um, gave them her website. So this is how, this is it. This is my vibe. This is my tribe. This is what I do. Um, and it helps. It helps my collaborators, and it helps me, because then people can say, oh, do you know anywhere? I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm a connector. That's my superpower. Arrows all over the place, but I'll explain this. So, B&M Catering went, is a part of the United Regional Chamber of Commerce. And to that, I wanted to get a little bit of um, just a little social stuff, right? So uh, what I did here was I posted a picture. And the picture was that we were at the Skyrock Brewery, hosted a United Regional Chamber event. So I tagged Skyrock Brewery. I tagged the United Regional Chamber of Commerce. OK, so that's pretty good. I wanted to get some traction on that. What I also did was I went back in as Susan Finn instead of B&M Catering, and I tagged my friends Trisha White and Jack Lank. Jack Lank is the president of United Regional Chamber. Trisha White just knows everybody on the earth. And so I wanted them to notice that I did that because I wanted them to share it on their social sites. And so they did. And so that particular post got 1,500 uh, views. And it got a good amount of engagement, 26 and 7. It's pretty good. Facebook is ridiculous. I mean, just do what you can, but try to get them around. So this is another one, right? I have this tiny little Easton Grange in Easton, and it's like, it's like seven people kind of well into their 70s, really trying to keep this alive. They're doing an amazing job doing what they do in the community, but clearly Facebook is not their thing. So we post a little bit of their 16 followers, and we're trying to, they 88, 33, 15, 21, 1,600 views on this one post. So I went back and said, wow, 1,600 views on that one post. The 1,600 views was because Carolyn Cole, who's on the board of the Grange, shared it. And she shared it in a couple of different groups. And she is well connected in town. Everybody, knows she's on every committee in town. And she runs every kind of everything. So Carolyn shared it. And it got 1,600 views with 50 followers. So keep that in mind. Who are your influencers? This is just really for you to remember to schedule. I, I, can't, I can't even tell you how much easier everything is when you schedule. Do we have time for action? Well, we have some time for action. All right, so here what I'm going to do is have you take 190 seconds and make a list of who you know who would be your loyal, your loyalist, your zombie loyalist. Who do you know that's connected, has a lot of followers, or their business has a lot of followers? Make a list who you can collaborate with, whether it's on social media or, and I don't know if I get into this later, maybe I do, but really, like, who can write for you and then you can spotlight them. All right, so Beth, Beth Knauss is a, a writer and she just wrote an article for another collaborative member for me. So she highlighted Carrie. She gave me the content. It's on my site. So I'll, I'm going to shout out, hey, look at this article that Beth wrote about Carrie. And they can also share it on their platform. So with one article, 
you're getting three times the juice. And then we're going to hope, too, that each of our other people in the collaborative also share that. So how much juice can you get out of everything? Give that some thought. Even if you don't um, write it down now, really think about that. How can you build? Ooh, where, where's your vibe, right? Where's your tribe? And then the third tenet to what I had talked about before was the in-person, and a lot of what I just talked about ties into this, too. Can I and ask again, you a question oh, when you sure. say you're the champion for them or whatever? Yeah. So where are you doing that? Like on Facebook, you're putting a post out there and then sharing it? Yeah, so there. everything, I'm going to pl plug in my computer so it doesn't die while we're talking. Oh, okay. yeah. One of the, um, so the first thing I do all the time is get it on my website somewhere. Oh, you put it on and the reason I do that is um, so that it's always there, number one. Number two, so that um, I have content on my site, right? All those yummy keywords. Yeah. And also, um, then I can take it and drive people here. Oh, thank She's such a caretaker. So I always do it. And also, then I can measure it. I can measure content on uh, traffic to my content on my site oh, okay. easier than I can measure it anywhere else. Number one, number two, if I if I am driving people, thank you. Even if when I'm driving people to my site to say to read this, oh, let's see what Carrie and Beth are up to. Um, I'm also going to have links and buttons that are going to try to. Oh, did you like this article? Maybe you want to read the article that was you know about so and so as well. Oh. Right. So all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed you said Yelp was really your friend. Um, we don't pay. Some of them. I don't have anything against them yet. Yeah. <laughs> calling you asking me to advertise. Yeah. So, like, I'm at a loss about all that. Yeah. Really we don't. Okay. Um, we haven't seen the value in it yet. Yeah, but I think, yeah. They're very. Persistent? Oh, yeah. And they get really, really busy. Yes, They're that's what I hear, right? So that's bad. Oh, all right. Not going to stop and talk about that. However, you can even with the free, you can look at the analytics, and um, I love that. I love looking at. And again, because I love representing this particular company, and because people are posting really great reviews on there, I love Yelp. But I have heard other bad things. You generally can stay in touch. Please stay in touch. So whatever that means to you. Maybe it's email marketing. Maybe it's tagging them in a Facebook post. Maybe it's sending a message, hey, I saw this article. I thought of you. What do you think of this? Like, just stay in touch with your, with your tribe. So these are the tribes that I'm in. WordPress is kind of new to me. I went, um, Aileen gave a talk, and I went to the meetup in um, Rhode Island. I think it was last month or the month before. And my goodness, there's um, WordPress meetups the, the one I went to was um, in Pawtucket, I think, and then I just saw that there's one in New Bedford that I'm hoping to get to when I move to Westport next month. Um, but geez, just sitting in a room with like-minded people and learning, I just am such a junkie for learning. Norwood Space Center, I mentioned, um, is going to have collaborative workspace and shared workspace. Like, that's awesome. Uh, she Breathes Balance and Wellness Studio, the Women's Business Network, and Social Media Divas um, is a group of women that got together for expressly what I'm talking about now. How can we learn from each other and grow with each other? So we would maybe go to a conference like this together, and somebody would go to the one next door, with, and, and then we would share. What did you learn? What was your takeaway? Or can somebody look at this article that I wrote and let me know, like, would you change it? What does it look like? Oh, I'm vamping up my website. What do you think? If you can build collaboratives, if you can build like a mind trust or an accountability, whatever you want to call it, an inner circle, a board of directors, just get together with some people to be able to, to um, brainstorm and learn from each other. These are my tribes. And um, looking for more. Oh, that's it. So I think, I think it gives us time. That gives us time for questions and just Oh, so there's my thing. You can, um, I invite you to um, call me or go contact me in any of the hundred ways that you can through my website. Um, and let's talk for 20 minutes if I can help you just kind of figure out what an actionable step is for you first um, or figure out where you want to go from there. And 
Also, I think somewhere there I offered that there's a, I'm with Constant, I, I uh, am a partner with Constant Contact as well. If you want to talk about Constant Contact or you want to try a 60 day free trial, give that a go. And again, if you want these slides, um, you can do that fun thing. I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys took some, um, some things away and that you'll be able to actually work on them, maybe even while you're here. I will go upstairs to the, um, Happy place? What's that? Happy. <laughs> I'm going to my happy place. After this, I'm going to hang out there. So what, what do we have for questions? I think we have a few minutes. So with this uh, tax service that you're using, how else do you use that for the to engage people or connect with people? Or so the way, other ways I've seen it used, so um, one of my clients is an artist, and she's doing a ton of vendor events right now. And so she has that, like this, on a sign on her um, table. And so what that does for her is if people want to, they can do that. And she also uses a QR code. They can do that right away, get on her email list, get her coupon or her discount or whatever it is that she's offering at that time. So for them, it may be easier. Some people are more tech than written. The other thing is, so she just did an event this weekend, and some people did that, and they got right away the automated email that you guys look at. Um, other people didn't. And what they did was they signed her clipboard, and there were three email addresses I could not read, and they bounced when she sent that to me, right? So here, people, you know that they're using the right, hopefully, they're putting it in, and it works out right. Other ways people have done it, download my ebook. Um, get a free coupon, schedule, you know, schedule me for such and such. Have you ever seen somebody uh, put this stay on the back of a business card? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or QR code, some people do that as well. Yeah. And how do you get a number to text to? That's through yeah. constant contact. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you pay for that. What's that cost like that, a number to text? Well, that's part of the. Um, that's just part of their service. If you're using Constant Contact, it's just something you can do. If you have Constant Contact, it's on um, Build My List. It's the tab. Is it also like on a Mailchimp? Yeah. I haven't too. seen it on Mailchimp, oh, okay. but it, it could be. Yeah. But I have not seen it. Oh, okay. I don't use either. I just use yeah, I do use Mailchimp for two clients, three clients, but neither. I, I haven't even searched in there to see. Oh, okay. yeah. What, what would that number be called? If you were researching... Text to join number, maybe? Okay. You see it a lot like it, but, uh, like the ballpark, right? Too, like I go to the Fenway and sometimes they're like, text so-and-so, you know, such-and-such yeah, and such and such number, text for whatever. For yeah. your pictures, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Is that more um, user-friendly now than the QR code? I feel like the QR code is kind of like... Yeah, it came and it left. I, yes. Yeah. I don't know many no people who use that. a QR code. Yeah. You know, I gave it to my vendor in case she had people that. But, right. Yeah, no. Yeah. I don't know anyone who's using it. <laughs> when you do like a shout out to a certain company, um, and you, do you have to ask them to do, to put it on their website? Like, if you want to try to build it for your. So if I'm in a collaborative situation, as I am with, with Beth or with um, other people, um, we've already talked about it. I'm gonna, you're gonna, she, she's writing for me, and we're collaborating, and so I have it on my site, and then she's going to share it on her social media. As right, um, with B&M Catering, let's say with Arrowhead Acres, they don't do a lot, right? I, I come up, you know who does do though? B&M Catering are amazing photographers. Whoever was talking about photography, the photographers real mostly know how to use the social media. So often a photographer will do a wedding, they'll write a blog with the beautiful photos, and then they'll put it up on their site and say, here's you know, so-and-so's wedding, and here were all the vendors, and they tag them oh. on Twitter and on Facebook. Do you actually ask them? I do, no, but no, and I don't even know. Hopefully they do it for you. The, the, the one, the photographers who want um, a little bit, who want their photos shared, right? So Tiffany Joyce just did it last week for b and I didn't know her. I didn't know she was at this wedding at Camp Hoffman. But she posted and she tagged B&M Catering. And so B&M Catering shared it. And now B&M Catering is going to put it on a blog because she gave us permission to use her photos. And eventually it will go on our email. And it will go on our Instagram and our Pinterest. Yeah, so she, with that little effort, right, tagging at B&M Catering, or at Clam Bay Co., um, 
got all that juice just from one other company, and hopefully other people are looking as well. Any other questions? When you take a picture and you put it on your site or something and somebody else uses your picture, um, do, you, do you get, you know, I mean, can they just do that or are they supposed to give you credit for it? Or what? Credit. Yeah, oh, when I okay. use something on the website, if it's not one of our pictures, I give the photographer credit. Oh, absolutely. You should, you should always have. Yeah. You should always have. Yeah. Can I offer a source for photos? Yeah. Morgue file. Morgue file. Morgue file is a good source. For, for pictures. I use Pexels. M O R G U E. Yep, just like the, where dead people might be. But they're great photos, and you can search by topic. And they are all copyright free, and the photographers who have put them there have put them there with permission for you to utilize them. And they have a little tag sometimes that says if they'd like to be acknowledged, mostly not. Sometimes they just would like to know how you use them. So I'm an artist, um, and I use them lots of times. I'll collate a bunch of photographs and smoosh them all together and create a painting from it, and they like to see the finished work. What's that? What's this one? Word file, M-O-R-G-U-E, file, F-I-L-E, all one word, wordfile.com. And also Wikimedia Commons, commons.wikimedia.org. A lot of them you need to put attribution, but you're not a bad person. That's called Wikimedia Commons. That's what she said, Wikimedia Commons. Commons at Wikimedia.org. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and then Flickr, if you're doing searches on Flickr, you can, they have a whole, uh, whole uh, settings that you can look specifically for Creative Commons, um, which has a lot of different options for uh, photographs, images, videos, and For images, Pexels, P E X E L S, Pexels.com. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, for your pictures, you can put keywords in your pictures, right? So um, that's a really great question, right? So, so search engine optimization. When you're putting your images up on your website, before you load them up to your website, you want to um, give it a name, right? Instead of image 041, give it an image, uh, maximize your vendor event, one, let's say. And then when you upload it to your site, usually WordPress will give you the option to have alt text. So you're going to also use one of your keywords in there, maximize your vendor event. And then it actually gives you a place to put a description as well. Best practices for maximizing your vendor event for small business owners, da da da, da. These are the keywords that I want to get found on. And so those, that was a really good question, yeah. Goes into like search engine optimization because we don't see it. So actually the alt text though is I think, and I'm not, it's not my world, but I believe the alt text is very helpful slash maybe even required in some cases because if you are a vision impaired person on a website, That's it's going to read to you. Yeah. So it's going to say image 041 or it's going to say maximizing your vendor event. Yeah. Do you also suggest, additionally with the keywords, do you also suggest like <coughs> put your company name in there as well in case somebody shares that image? Could be hard. I also am a big fan of the watermark, making sure that your watermark or your website or something is on a, on a picture that you don't want somebody else to use. If you watermark it, does it actually show up as watermark on your site? Yeah. I guess when I said, maybe it's not really a watermark what I'm talking about, just say maybe just put your logo on it. Okay. And you can like fade out, the, you can fade it out if you want to. So I don't know if I've actually used the right word. But basically have it branded somehow if you don't want other people to take it. Good? Have some lunch. Thank you guys so much.